we've covered pretty much all the different ways to feed the engine. Um, we've gone over the, the differences between a hydraulic lifter and a solid lifter. Uh, next thing is uh, remedies. Uh, we didn't get to really remedies yet. We, we've gone to our leaks, we've gotten our, to our main goal, which is make sure that the main bearing is always fed. Uh, but remedies. So there's a bunch of uh, remedies out there. Um, first remedy you'll see a lot of times, and I think there's even companies selling these out on the internet um, because people buy them. That's why they sell them. Uh, they put a external oil line from this back to your feed, back to your uh, where your gauge would normally pick up and you would read your pressure. So what they basically are doing, or the, the theory behind that is, is okay, I understand there's a leak between here and my main bearings, and I see less oil pressure here than what I would here, so I'm gonna put a hose from here to here, and then put my gauge on it, and everything's good, I've solved all my problems. Well, really, again, you're washing your car, you're filling your bucket, so now, Maybe you have, uh, you string two hoses from the house, but both of them have leaks, and you fill in your bucket, but you still haven't fixed the leak filling all here. So you haven't fixed your volume of oil getting to the main bearings because you still have the leaks. So what this usually does, and you'll say, oh, well, but my gauge reads much higher now. So it, the engine must be seeing something better. Well, the gauge is reading higher because now you're going back to the same Windsor style where you're reading the pressure right off of the pump. You're not reading the pressure in the engine, what it's actually getting. So while you're looking really happy, the engine doesn't see any difference, doesn't see any difference at all. Only thing that happens is, is the gauge in the car reads a little bit higher, you're happy, you feel good, and you've solved your problem. If that's what you're looking for, then that's probably the method you should go. If you really want to fix your engine, probably not the best way to do it. The next one that we see is oil restricted push rods. Um, I see a lot of those when in these discussions of everything going on for how to fix your oil system. Again, let's go back to what is the main cutoff between the oil pump and what you're doing up here for your pressure reading. So when this lifter is in the engine, and the push rod is here, and I put a rocker. Typically, when you're getting the oil up through the cup, like I say, there's really no restriction between here because it's trying to get the oil to lube the cup, lube the push rod cup. It also gets a certain amount of oil pressurized at that point in time to feed the bearing. Certain rockers do, not all rockers do this, to feed the bearing or splash oil to the bearing in the fulcrum to, make the, to lubricate and cool the rocker. Now, We've already discussed that this, the oil is already metered before it ever gets to this. So the oil, what your separation point is from the oil pump to your rocker arm has already happened at the lifter. So if you go the route to where you're not gonna fix the lifter and fix the problem of the lifter, then the next thing is, okay, well, I'm gonna restrict the oil coming out of the lifter. Again, same as what the theory is, is trying to restrict oil to a cam bearing. You haven't fixed the leak ahead of time, you're trying to fix the leak after the problem. So you're cutting off the, the squeezing down what's happened after the lifter, after it was already supposed to have been metered. Now you're squeezing it down. That works okay until you put valve lash in here. Now you have valve lash. Well, when you have valve lash, this oil pressure coming through here, this is not in contact anymore. So with that, now you have an open leak between the two because it's not in contact anymore. So how is that doing any, how is this push rod restricting any oil up to the top end when it has valve, when it has a lash? Now in a hydraulic system, already has lash. Doesn't have lash, I should say. However, in your hydraulic system, as we went over, the disc in the lifter meters the oil through the top. This is not a direct hole from your entry hole to your outer hole. There's a metering disc inside of the lifter. 
the lifter has already controlled what it's going to spit out the top. So the lifter has done its job. It's already metered whatever oil it's going to put out the top and it's going to put out less than what that hole is in an oil restricted push rod. So it again does absolutely nothing for you. An oil restricted push rod does nothing for you because the hydraulic lifter has already done its job to meter the amount of oil it's going to spit out here. Now it hasn't metered out the oil that it's going to leak around it, but it has done its job and restricted the amount of oil that it's going to put into the push rod. So again, an oil restricted push rod, in my opinion, you can put whatever opinion you want in there of your own, um, does nothing for the engine because well over 50% of the time you have valve lash. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't have any compression. Without any compression, the thing's not running anyhow. It'll never hurt itself because it's not running. So with that oil restricted push rod, we don't use it, don't promote it, don't sell them, just don't have it. So again, if you're trying to take a route to where you don't want to fix your engine or fix the oiling system, that may be a method for you. Maybe it works for you, but uh, fluid dynamic wise, it doesn't work for us. So with that, those are the main uh, scenarios I see of how to fix the, the Cleveland oiling system in an engine, um, whether it be through outside hoses, whether it be through oil restricted push rods, putting in a lower volume oil pump, putting restrictors in the cam bearings. Those are primarily the ones that I see because actually those are the ones that are most talked about. I've given you my opinion on any of those. I've tried to give you the, sort of the physics of why they work and why they don't, as opposed to just going, they don't work. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little bit of a demo here on, uh, this is a, a, an engine that is uh, pretty much all assembled. This is a hydraulic roller. So it's got those same identical lifters in it that we had there on the bench. This one's pretty much all assembled. And what we're gonna do, this block has not been lifter bushed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our five quarts of oil inside of this engine, and we're gonna put a primer on it, and we're gonna put a gauge on it. And then we're going to, now granted, this is engine, or excuse me, room temperature oil. This is not 190 degree oil going down the road. So we're not gonna have a true scenario. I mean, I could probably try to put like kerosene or something in it that's extremely, extremely thin to, um, replicate how thin the oil would be when it's hot, but I really don't want to run kerosene through a good engine. So what we're going to do is put five quarts of oil in it, but I will show you a few things of, give you just a, a slight demo of why things and how it does actually work. We're going to go ahead and pour the oil in the engine, um, get set up with our pressure gauge and uh, get our drill ready to prime this engine. And what we're gonna do, so that there's, there's no smoke and mirrors or anything that we're trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes, is we're gonna put the oil in here, we're gonna do a, a little bit of a pressurized demo, and then we're really gonna take and drain the oil out of this engine, take the filter off of this engine, and put it on this engine, so that there's no saying, well, we put a different oil or anything like that in there. We're gonna use the same oil in this engine, the same filter, so we're gonna use the same style restrictions in this engine that we are in this one. The only thing different is, this one actually has the push rods and everything on it, and they are um, already set to lash. This one is hydraulic, this one is solid, and we're gonna run this one without even any push rod restriction in it at all. So there'll be nothing restricting the top end of the engine except for the lifter, which is where it's supposed to be, which is where we're gonna try to show our point of really that's how the system works. But anyhow, stay tuned for part two.